uh, thanks for doing this. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of them, but there's zero fucking format. We just completely do the shit. I always start off asking a couple questions about songs that I'm interested in, and uh, then we just uh, field some questions here. I don't know if you can see them rolling by in microfish. We get two people on the screen. That's the tiniest little fucking questions ever. Hey, Allie. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to jump right in. Uh, there's a thing that, that you do that I've always loved in your songs. Um, where you hold quite a few ideas at once without reconciling them, and you hold them right in people's fucking face. I love it. Like like a, a song like Osama Bin Laden's Crucify Christ, uh, which is um, sounds like, it feels like where, you're, where it's going, it feels like this sort of righteous reckoning, you know, post-fascist Italy. Um, and, but then it's also holding the idea that violence is still violence. And then it's also simultaneously holding the idea of, you know, one person's uh, terrorist is another person's martyr, which is a heavy idea, and it's right the fuck there in the face. And then for the chuckleheads that just want to rock along, I mean, I'm sure you've run off most of the chuckleheads years ago, but there's just still the riff. I mean, the riff is like one of the best Sabbath riffs of all time. You were playing that on the Revival Tour when we, uh, when we first hung out, and just on an acoustic, and it was like, but so anyway, I, 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 I those that balancing of the things is that how do you approach that? Is that a, just an innate thing? Or? Well, I mean, first of all, I think you're the first person who I've ever talked to who has ever actually got all those sentiments that are present in those songs, or was able to at least verbalize their understanding of it, which I, I greatly appreciate. Um, but I don't know. I guess in general, like. I feel like I'm a lot better at asking questions with songs than I am at answering them. And I can make observations and I can fixate on an observation. And sometimes maybe that observation comes across as an answer or as a declaration, but, but it's not necessarily something I'm, that I'm, I'm totally decided on the violence, the, the comment about violence. Yes, definitely for sure. But I mean, to me, that song, like, sprung from just like I, I forget where I was reading about how they they hung Mussolini and his lover Clara from the rafters of an SO which is Exxon SO gas station at the at you know at the end of World War II and just something about that idea of just like I don't know of, of the the brand recognition in there of S, of Esso, you know, of like you see Exxon's and Esso's everywhere, and the idea of oh, they hung them from the golden arches, yeah, 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 right. exactly, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. it might as well have been, they might as well have hung them from the golden arches, yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm a lot better at asking questions, and I think in general that's like my approach is is starting off with a question and examining. Yeah, yeah, that was that Keats talks about negative capability. You know, being in uh, confusion without reaching for a, a, a simplistic answer, being able to to hold simultaneous uh, thoughts. And I, I don't know, I, I find that a lot in your music. I dig it. Like uh, even in one that's like, uh, you know, at first glance, it's just like a Ramones meets Orwell thing. Like uh, provision, provision L three. That would that would, that one was called. And I'm yeah. playing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, you can pop along to it or whatever, and then you're like, oh yeah, there's some dystopian stuff here, and then it then it's personal too, you know. And it's like it, 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 you've always been uh, uh, able to balance the political without being didactic with the personal. That, that's you know. But in a song like uh, it, like that, um, I think most people missed that one. I, and I still like to this day, I'll get people who will like randomly online be like. I was standing in line at the security at the airport and I realized that the body scanning machine is called ProVision L3. And that's yeah. all it is. It's just that, you know, you go in and you hold your hands up and they completely examine you. And I mean, to me, there's like, there's, I mean, I don't, there, there's nothing more invasive than that. You know, there's somebody is literally seeing inside of you just to get on an airplane, you know, like you, all of your privacy is gone at that point. And I've had really negative experiences, you know, with that, just where, like, as a trans per person, people, like, discriminate you against you when you're going through a body scanning machine. Um, and just, like, what a, what a dystopian hellscape that is, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's the thing. It's, it, if, you want, if you pop the song on, you're like, yeah. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. This is, there's some Kafka here. And there's, <laughs> yeah. And, 
I, I, I just, I always appreciate that, uh, that there's a, a lot of things going on. Um, uh, somebody was asking about, um, not to just jump around too much, but they were asking about uh, when you write a song like that or, or uh, one that's a ripper, like a banger, you know, um, do you approach lyrics any different? Excuse me, any differently uh, when we've got... Sure, yeah, no worries. Take a drink. <laughs> I swear to God. Allergy <laughs> season. Um, I do, you know, because I'm not, like, when it comes down to it, I'm I'm not a riffer. Like, I'm, I'm not a shredder, and, and it's it's I appreciate it greatly. It's just not my strongest suit. So when I do, on the off chance, come up with a riff, then... You know, then it flips my process around where I'll I'll have a riff and then I'm like, OK, now how do I fit words to this riff? Whereas usually I do the opposite where I'll write the words first and then I'll fit the music around it. And my thinking with that has always been like, you know, if you build the room first, then you have to arrange the furniture within the room. But if you can arrange the furniture first and then build the room around it. I feel like you're just going to get a much more interesting room. <laughs> and a lot more lookers at the construction site. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's an interesting. I'm going to have to think about that one when I get out here. <laughs> well, there's like only that. so many chord structures, you know, and, and, and that used to trip me up so much when I was younger and first starting out was like, you know, I, first time I wrote a song that was like C to F to G to F or something like that, I was like, oh, well, that's it. That's that's the only time I can use that chord structure, you know, or chord pattern. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't start to use those chords. I can never use yeah, yeah. them. But I didn't realize that. And I, did, I thought, like, it's a one-time only thing. So then I would, like, <laughs> have these holes of, like, well, I'd, I'd, like, try to invent different, you know, uh, chord structures without then realizing, like, oh, you're just phrasing a C chord differently. You yeah, know? yeah. It's Doing it differently, right? And so... It took me a long, long time to get past that of just like uh, of getting over that like chances are your chord structure has been done a million times before, and it's it's really about what you do with the the vocal and with the lyrics. And when it comes down to it, like there are infinite more possibilities of consonants and vowels that will dictate your cadence of what you're singing. Um, and so, like, I usually go for volume of words, and once I know that I have, like, a specific volume of words, like a, a notebook page full, um, I'm like, well, I, can, I can carve a song out of that. I, I, it may not be exactly as I wrote it. I'll have to rearrange stuff and add stuff, subtract stuff, but there'll be something there. As long as I have a page worth of an idea, I can carve something out of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So do you, uh, do you have... Uh them stacked up or do you you take what you have and say i'm going to fashion something out of this or do you you pull from the archives if you have the old notebooks and a little bit of you know here and there and and it's changed over the years too like i've recent i used to have just one notebook and it would just be a kind of disorganized mess of like journal entries and song lyrics and you know the blurring in between and random quotes and i I would take my notebook and like on the on the way you would normally open it, I would write journal side and then I'd flip it around and on the other side, I would write the lyrics. So they were the same way. Um, and just to keep that separation. But now I have like multiple notebooks and now I've gotten into the process of two of like, I'll have folders with songs in various stages of like, this one's complete, this one still needs work. And this one is like, like today, I have this song that I've been working on for like two years now and it's got, it got to the point where I was so cluttered where I had 15 pages worth of rough drafts of lyrics where I was like, I just need to go through and pick out the things I like and put them all on one page, even if it's not clear, like finished because this is just too much. It's too disorganized. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I find when I pull it's the clip art of actually just treating it as source material, like when you start to pull together and, just putting them against, you know, things. The juxtaposition times sometimes it's like, oh, well, scrap all that. This is great. This, you know, I can I can take that place and go somewhere, you know. But that's like you, you have to, it, and it took me a while to get there too. Of like, you can't be precious about things, and you oh, have to no. 
you have to be willing to to kill your babies. You they know? are all expendable. <laughs> all expendable. Yeah, especially the ones that are dear. You know, when it's when it's super for me. Uh, when it's super personal, and uh, I got to figure out which part of me I'm impressing with the lyric, you know. <laughs> and if and if it's the technician, it's like, oh, that's got to go, you know. Because the technician, you know, I've got that sort of thing where I like to get down into the in the rhythms and the consonants and the, and uh, you know a little bit of the, and then I try to hide that I've done it, you know, and, and so it doesn't look so crafted. But yeah, for me, I have to I have to watch which part of myself I'm pleasing with the lyrics. You know? Sure, sure. I, I I like um, I find though that I need the reflection of someone else to bounce something off of to know how I truly feel about it. That like, and it took me a while to realize this too. Of like, if I play a song that I've written for somebody, and I have to be in the room. And if there's a part where I'm like, that makes me uncomfortable, I'm, ooh, you know, like, oh, that line, you know, like, I just have to recognize, like, oh, that's not finished. You have to go back and you have to finish that to where you don't feel uncomfortable anymore and you feel completely confident, you know? Yeah. Do, you, it, uh, do you send uh, uh, roughs and stuff out there? Because I, I, I bug a few of my friends, you know, I, I'll just, as I'm writing on the road and stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll fire them off to like Dave Hawes or something. He's, he's a good sounding board and stuff like that. Um, do, do you bounce anything off anybody or you, do you have, need to be in the room, like you said? Well, I mean, I sent you one a couple <laughs> nights ago, right? Um, and, and I, I, you know, within the band, sure. And, and I do more and more i used to be really like more precious about it and more like because i get scared sometimes about like not that it's like a direct theft thing just that like you pick up on stuff and then it floats into the subconscious and then all of a sudden somebody else has written a song that you actually wrote and they didn't they didn't even realize it and but you know it's it's like on the one hand like i don't I don't know. I think that like in the tradition of rock and roll and in the tradition of songwriting, that that's part of it, you know, is that you should be borrowing from people and that that's not theft as long as it's like borrowing and learning and twisting an idea and doing your own spin on it. And that that's like, that's just rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I don't know. Like I, I have a studio spot here in Chicago where, you know, I have my own room, but like, the, there's the air vent or whatever where if you're walking down the hall you could hear what every single person in the building is working on and sometimes when I'm just like in there you know especially if like I'm just doing a vocal like demo or something like that so I'm just screaming into the air um I get paranoid that like shit someone what if someone's sitting outside my door right now just listening to my lyrics and like taking di- down ideas you know? I love it I love it then the walls Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, I saw your post about because um, so, uh, this is something I, I, I think about a little bit because I do have neighbors that I bother with my guitar. But <laughs> for the most part, you know, it's Memphis, and I'm relative, relatively isolated. Um, I saw you bought a, a vocal isolation booth, um, <laughs> and it looks like the Terminator, uh, not to the the RoboCop thing. Uh, it's, it's giant. giant. <laughs> it's giant. So does it work? Right. Oh, so Over there. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I looked at one online, and then when I saw your picture, I was like, I had no idea about the scale of the thing. It's huge. Well, it's funny, because, like, I actually just today went into my, like, Google preferences and realized that, like, I needed to turn off whatever ad tracking, because I looked at it once online, and then for, like, the past four months, I've been getting the same ads for it to where it finally broke me down, especially with what's happening, and I actually need it. And I was like, fine, fuck it, I'm buying it, you know? They they know. Lord, they know. I know. My wife, my wife's like, please don't look at gear when you're on my phone or something. She's like, I'm getting ads for this stuff. I, uh, I got an ad the other day. It was so specific uh, because I, I haven't slept for shit lately. And I've been, you know, programming music here at the house. So I've been learning to program drum beats. I got an ad from Audible for P. Diddy. Um, uh, and it was his uh, uh, music to sleep to. And so it was like it was like so custom tailored. I'm like, they're they're in the walls, man. They didn't. <laughs> That's like, it's scary. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, okay. So the Isovox, like, it it did. I, I my problem is that like I live in an apartment and I need volume reduction because I have a loud voice. So it didn't give me the total reduction in volume that I wanted. If I like, if I need like. 20 dB less, it maybe gave me 8 dB less, right? 
but it did like it does really do a good job of killing the deflection and yeah. it gives you like a really clean signal clean sound and i was impressed in that i thought it would be a much more boxy tone because you're like your head is literally in a box but it's it's pretty great in that it, it doesn't sound too boxy at all and, and the little bit that's in there i'm confident could be eq'd out if you're competent with eq um <clears throat> my my critiques of it would be is that there's fucking no airflow in there so if you do like Tony garlic before you sing. <laughs> oh my god well okay i'll get to that but like just there's no air i'm like doing i'm like singing songs and i'm like oh my god i'm getting lightheaded i just need to come out of this for a second i can't breathe and then you know like there's options for the color, and I got the one that's midnight black on the outside, but inside it's still like a grayish white. And like the other day, I was eating some Cheez Its, and I went in to do a vocal ticket. I'm like, oh my God, I'm fucking spraying Cheez Its all over in here, and they're never gonna be able to get out of this thing because you can't wash it, you know? It's gonna look like the inside of a microwave. <laughs> Seriously. Um, and then, like, I don't know, the mount's kind of weird in there, like, you can't use. Not all mics will use for the, will work for the the mount that comes with it, which is like a complaint that I have with it. But I mean, I'm just like you know, I'm trying to trying to keep working. Same, same. You, know, you see these little tiles on the wall. They don't they they don't do for the vocal. I cl- I borrowed my son's uh, canvas tent, and so yeah. I'm down I'm down sitting on a pillow recording. You know, to get the you know to keep this all ringing off the walls. I'm in you know I'm like I'll, I'll return your tent later. But, you know. <laughs> We can play in it. <laughs> that's gonna do some work, right? <laughs> um, so let's uh, let me ask a few questions, and we'll just we'll just shoot in and out. Um, uh, Trans punks was asking any new songs towards a uh, second devouring mothers, right? Um, I I don't even know what's what right now. You know, yeah. like as as far as any momentum that was happening for plans before this pandemic i feel like that's all out the window you know and i don't know where the future lies or what um it sucks because you know like none of me and my band members live in the same city so you know it's not i I would love it if like the idea would be like oh we all lived on a farm somewhere and we were just isolated in place and we could just every day you know way to spend time but that's not my situation so i've just been like you know, uh, on the one hand, it's like it, it makes me calm to like continue working and to and to continue writing. But on the other hand, like Jesus Christ, some days it's a real slog where I just have no inspiration. You know, like I'm, today, all I did was have a panic attack all day before this. I went running for a little bit, but then you know, this feels good. It's nice to talk to you and talk to everyone else. But like, goddamn, you know, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. This is. I mean, that was part of the idea. Of this is like. Hey, I'm not that social, but I do need I do need to hang with some people I, I like. <laughs> so that was that was a side product. I was like, and it will keep you going crazy. It might be useful, even just as a pure distraction for people, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's I'm trying it's the same thing. Just try not to think too hard down the line. You know, too many chess moves ahead. It, it, it's it's too many variables right now. I you know, Corey, like one of the things I really really greatly appreciate about your songwriting is that like i believe every word you write and i don't feel like it's like fictional don't ruin that for me if it is fictional but um so i imagine like that and i i can't write fiction well you know like so i imagine that you know there's only so many songs you can write that are like woke up today nothing to fucking do today (laughs) fucking like drinking coffee and having panic attacks jesus fucking christ you know like (laughs) yeah right uh, Stephen Merritt wrote quite a few good ones. About it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we've we got some limited things we're pulling from right now. We're gonna have to go in, insular. Um, uh, well, I mean, that was that's something that uh, that you, that you've always done with your music as well, too. Though, I mean, a lot of it uh, feels like um, there's a lot of fire with you know having feeling like you're your back's against the wall society you're, you're fighting out of a corner a lot of times but then uh, as you go on to the records you know you are the wall kind of you know <laughs> you're like oh shit I'm, I you know it, a lot of it turns internal 
back at yourself for, for you know, all kinds of reasons. And I, I just I think you articulate that really well. And is it how much of that is, you know, uh, okay, I've got these, I've got these really personal things with journals and things like that. It's like, how much of this, because you've never lost fun. The stuff is still fun. You know, even <laughs> that, I mean, I don't understand that, how you do those three things. <laughs> <laughs> Like some people do both. Some people do the personal and the political, you know, but they're just not fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have trouble with the political more and more, though. It used to be something that was much easier for me when I was younger. And maybe it's now just like, like now I feel like anytime I stumble on something political, it's it's just that. Like I stumbled into it and it was accidental. And, and the politics to it are accidental. Um, it, it, like it's really hard for me to sit down and be like, I'm going to write an overtly political song right now about the way I feel about what's going on because I I don't know, you know, like I just do not have the answers. And, you know, there's so much like talk nowadays of like, oh, well, you know, at least with these circumstances, we'll get some really great art about it. Or like now he's got a rock to come up and oh, I love it, you know, like, and I, I just, I can't think like that. I can't, I can't, I, I guess like that's the thing is that for me, it like, I work way better when it's subconscious as opposed to conscious action. I cannot, like for me, my worst results are when I'm trying to be very direct. Yeah, yeah. It, I'm, I'm intuitive as well with that. I'm, I'm not, I can't say, I never know when I'm writing. I never know what it is. You know, I, I just sense it and feel it, you know, and I follow. I, I can't sit down and dictate and be like. Well, do you do words or lyrics, or sorry, lyrics or, or chords first? Uh, words, mostly. Uh, yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I find, and it's funny that you mentioned uh, cadences and things like that, especially in rock and roll. I find that um, the lyrics, you know, uh, the way uh, I would say a thing is the way I would sing it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, words have a natural melody to them. I, I always do that. There was this little uh, exercise in this one book where this uh, this music teacher, I think, in, in the school, and I'm getting this all wrong, I'm sure, but played, <laughs> played a clip of a video uh, and over and over, just a, a one sentence thing, and played it over and over and over, and just someone talking and said, "Now sing it," and everybody in the room sang this melody together because words have a natural cadence, the way they rise, and if you hear something enough, and so I try to f- sort of find that in there and 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 find the music that's already in the lyrics. I don't, I, it, but with rock and roll, you're you're locked, usually in a four four format. There's only so many da 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 da. Da 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 da. You know da da da. There's only you know there's only so much to play with the rhythm, the push and pull like that. But it, but it makes it that much more important, I think, in rock and roll. It wasn't something I I really actually realized until recently with that. Where like you know sometimes I would write out I'd I'd, I'd get a song going and I'd have lyrics going for it and I'd I'd have a cadence that I really liked and a melody that I really liked. But maybe some of the word wording would be clunky in what I was trying to say. And I'd be like, oh, I don't want to lose the spirit of it. Like, I, And it, it took me a while to realize, like, oh, just, like, count the consonants. Like, this line is five, the next line is seven, the next line is five. Just find another thing to say that's five, then seven, then five. And like, that'll fit in there. I, I, yeah, I feel so stupid that I didn't stumble into it later in life, but that's just like, oh, oh you can do that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Jim Dickinson, uh, I don't know if you know Jim. Uh, I do. Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he would always, Luther, his son, would always talk to me about how Jim was like that. You know, he's like, he's like, just, you know, bang it out on a drum. You know, your tongue is the drum. It's like, it's like, it's rock and roll. It's like, you know, just bang it out and then see later, you know, if you have any sense with it. But he's like, when you're doing rock and roll, he's like, it's the rhythm. You're, you're a drummer with your, with your lyrics, you know. And yeah. Then, you know, that's uh, that's tricky. It's hard to do that and and have you know sense and sound meld, and then you're like, oh, oh shit. Well, I've got the sound of this. You know, I'm using soft words if I want to evoke this thing. It's like I forgot rhythm. <laughs> you know, it's like just the the juggling all of it. It's it's I don't know, but yeah. it's intuitive. You know, it's probably not something you think about. Well, and then once you start thinking about it, you ruin it. And then uh, so that oftentimes, like I'll recognize, like okay. This I don't like, but it's just not going to come to me right now, and I have to let it go. And it's like, you know, my frontal lobe has shut down, and my lizard brain brain is, is taken over. And I just need to take a step back and breathe a little until my frontal lobes come back on, and then 
then the line will just come to me like while I'm washing dishes or I'm in the shower or something like that. Um, Jumping back to Jim Dickinson, though, my favorite Jim Dickinson quote ever is tuning is a European luxury. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've always heard it and always overstated as tuning is a decadent European tradition. <laughs> That's the one I always, he, 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 he riffed a lot on his quotes. I, uh, when I was, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Jim Dickinson was uh, a Memphis cat uh, piano player, played like piano on like wild horses and stuff from the stone sessions but he later on went to produce like a, a please to meet me by their placements and his son luther played on, on that and during a dirty pool i don't know why i'm sorry i'm on a tangent but uh why not what do we gotta be format. no format <laughs> yeah yeah uh but luther's brother cody is a drummer he always messes with me it's like he's like you finger tapped on a replacements record because <laughs> in the in the noise and shooting dirty pool, dirty pool, there's a siren. Hey, little, 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 little. That's Luther finger tapping an eleven years old in <laughs> some shredder guitar on a replacements record. <laughs> it does the thing. It does the thing. It worked. It worked. I'm, I think I'm gonna have Luther on here uh, uh, down the road. Um, let's see. Let's get some more questions here. Um, uh, uh, Rox La Casa and Jay. <laughs> Chase Zinger both had uh, questions that sort of along the same lines. Uh, example of a, a line from a song or a song itself that you heard and you were just like, fuck, wish I'd written that. I don't think popping your head. I know it's a, sort of a ubiquitous question, but. Um, well, I, I think, you know, of yours. The, oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> can't interrupt a multitasker is like. One of the best lyrics ever. I mean, that was, a, that like, was a lyric I had to let myself go ahead and sing because it was like, this is so dumb. Oh, so sometimes I have to get out of my way and be like, well, dumb is fun too, you know. <laughs> and if I could have written, if I could have written the corner, I, I would, I would kill to write the corner. I, I mean, like, fuck, it seems like it kills. It would have killed to have written the corner, you know. But um, damn, you know. Thank you. That's so. That's very kind. Yeah, that one and Survivor Blues. Those came out of a weird time. <laughs> okay. Well, so here's one then for you that I don't know if you picked up on, but you know, I don't know if you remember sitting outside of I forget what venue it was in in Dallas, and you were showing me the way the chords to Survivor Blues worked. Yeah. And it wasn't direct. I only realized it after I did it. But my song, "Fuck My Life," six six six. I love that song. I totally ripped. I totally ripped from you. I, I like it's not the exact chords, but the way you like were jumping from chord to chord and going back was never something I had thought to approach it in a way before. And that's fuck my life six six six. Oh, nice! I love it. Well, I'll probably rip it from Thin Lizzy, so just you know, <laughs> paid pay it for. <laughs> yeah, that was one I always felt bad about because we would do that song on a uh, uh, revival tour, you know, and I was just like, oh, because I'm like. You know, those chords change so much, you know, because I, 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 I'm mostly solo. And so when I get to, and this will bring me to uh, a good question. Um, I, I work solo a lot of times, but I like to record with a band. I like to work with a band. But sometimes when I bring these songs to a band, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> like, I'm such a dickhead for these <laughs> these changes. I'm like, it's, you know, it's just a, it's just a bar 7, 8, bar 3, 2, and then you drop that last beat, and then we're right here. And it's just like, I'm like, but I, I'm not... I do know music theory, but I'm not trying to be a prog band. I just feel them in those things, and and and, and you do some tricksy stuff in your songs, and it's and it's 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 the invisible stuff. It feels right. It doesn't feel like oh this herky jerky thing. But I mean, when you do, you take them to the band, square it off folk songs, or do you, you are you like you already have the the tricks and the things in there? Sometimes sometimes more fully formed like that but oftentimes like when i do have a song that is more fully formed like the band will throw that out and they won't like they won't follow it and i don't know if it's more of a like i think it's more of a i'm not gonna do that as opposed to i can't do that you know it's like a no one yeah. knows how to play type of thing i love it i love it seems to work and you've got i mean just such a killer band you know you work with great great people so i mean you know Seems to be working. Let me ask you one more question about Survivor Blues. It, it it's a broken symbol in there, right? What, uh, what's that? The drummer is playing a broken symbol, right? Or is it? Or is that the symbol? Or is it one of those symbols that has like the rivets in it? Uh, it might have the rivets in it. There's no telling what that guy did. He was so cool. Um, 
I remember on the, you know, because it's on the record two ways, because I cut it two ways, and I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll put them both on. But on the, the, the quiet one, he's the only drummer that ever asked me for lyrics. He's like, I want to. He's like, I want to know what the song's completely about. So he's playing. Uh, you can hear his fingers tapping. Uh, he didn't even have sticks. He's just tapping the snare with his fingers, and he, you can hear the paper on there. He had the lyrics there, and he's like reading. And, but he, uh, that record, he was always amazing me. Uh, that song, uh, uh, Snowman or whatever. The do do da do do da do do. He's playing a percussion kit. This, and he's throwing a bag of coins in the air while he's playing he's doing, 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 and he's just catching them and it was this is you know carny art <laughs> it was, it was, all right. but that's funny so that so you have ears that hear production stuff like that you, you're, you're drawn to like oh there's rivets and that symbol yeah and i didn't like i definitely didn't mean that in any negative way but every time i hear no 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 i I'm like, like that 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 symbol's cracked Either that symbol scratch or like, or the or there's one of those rivet ones, and I've always just been intrigued because it's perfect. It sounds great, but I think most people would, if it was a cracked symbol, I feel like most people would be like, "Oh, symbol's broken. Got to get a, you know, can't use a cracked symbol." Oh yeah, no, no, not they probably a, killed it, you know. Not us. Well, the, it's funny that you mentioned that because the amp, the high watt that I'm using on the the rocket version of that is blown. Like mm -hmm. I blew it as soon as we hooked it up. And, and it like blew something awful in there and they were like it's smoking and I'm like well let the smoke go down and let me take a take and the, the guitar take was while well, that thing was literally dying and it's it's just sort of I'm like I like what it's doing I'm like just get the fire extinguisher ready you know but that's magic you know like I I am a strong like those add to it and that you shouldn't try to control everything and I like crave spontaneity in that way you know of like that that's why I like the the Pro Tool way of recording. Sometimes I'm just like ah, I can't do it. I can't I can't edit this to death. I just like need to do it in the moment. I need to capture something. Yeah, yeah. When I start taking the breaths out and things, it was like yeah. Uh, do you have any like any stories from uh, studio work or something that just you know happened and all of a sudden the song goes way left from from what you had envisioned and sort of like. Um, Not to put you on the spot, but I didn't know if anything <laughs> popped in your head. <laughs> Let me think about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, call me. Call me later. <laughs> uh, if, if, I'll put it in the back there and ask a couple more questions if it pops up. Uh, somebody asked, I know you said you're not a, a shredder, which I don't totally believe at all. Uh, I love the way you play. And you've got, uh, I mean, you know, you got James to hold it down. So. Uh, but uh, tone-wise, with your guitar, I mean, there's there's some choices there, you know, with the rig and, and the box and stuff that, that were great. But somebody was asking about uh, Medic on Rad, I'm probably saying that wrong, was asking about guitarist influences. Guitarist influences. Um, late, for the past couple of years, I've been under the heavy, heavy, heavy influence of Roland S. Howard. Um, and that was like for the Devouring Mothers in particular, that was my whole like vibe for that was I want to play a Jaguar and I want to play like the RS02 pedal, which is the Roland S. Howard pedal, um, was like the main pedal I leaned on and then through a twin reverb. Um, and that was just like the sound for the record. But, you know, it's, it's kind of different for me for like studio versus live where live i completely defer to the sound technician and the stage tech because i never take my earplugs out on stage i definitely like damaged my hearing when i was younger at tinnitus and i just don't want to do any further damage so like i'm not gonna pop my earplugs out and play the guitar at full volume and, and be like mm, does it need more high end or like you know like i don't care like someone else tell me it sounds good whereas in a studio you know, you set the amp up in the other room and then I can I can go into a control room and I can listen at a more reasonable volume as to what the actual tone is and I can have an opinion then. Um, but live, I'm, I'm at the mercy of the sound engineer telling me, that sounds good, you know? Yeah, and then and it's, uh, <laughs> well, that's a roll of the dice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's loud. <laughs> res respect the sound engineers, but, you know, uh, a lot of them are, you know, disgruntled drummers. <laughs> it's like they're just dialing the perfect drum sound. They're like, all right, everything else. Let's find a little place for you ready. <laughs> but, uh, all right, enough griping, but for me. Uh, uh, Hawkline was asking if 
there's a different approach uh, for something like Heartbirds, like solo writing, or, or t- for band writing. Do you, do you... For Heartburns in particular, you know, it was really specific in that we were on the way back to the airport from a tour in Australia, and there was traffic. And for some reason, or we, we just happened to stop, be stopped in traffic in front of a music store, and I jumped out of the car, ran into the music store, and they had, it's in the other room, I won't, I won't go grab it, but this little Boss DR880 or something, I forget what model it is, but it's a drum machine that's like this big, looks like a calculator, battery operated. So I you know, bought it, it was like 200 bucks, and then the whole flight home, I just read how to program it, and it was super easy, and I wrote like three or four drum pattern songs on it. And then was like, well, let's go with this, you know? And then at first thought I was just writing against me songs, but I fell so in love with just playing around with the drum machine and the band was having whatever issues it was happening, having that I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to run with this. And it was funny. Cause like I went, I was so like used to the sound of it and the way it moved. And I went into a studio to demo that record first. And the engineer, my friend Rob was like, um, I think that has some like, uh, some some like audio illusions that are happening with it or like the tempos might be fluctuating i'm like what do you what do you mean uh, I, I don't hear it <laughs> like then you like put it up against the graph and you could see clearly where it was like speeding <laughs> down and like i don't know because it was like batteries are coming and going or whatever but so we ended up like when i actually did the record going in and, and chopping it up and, and quantizing it or whatever i love it but it, uh, it had some arrangement ideas yeah, but, but sometimes, you know, like a lot of those drum machines, old drum machines will have those tempo fluctuations that are that are feel that when you do quantize it, it loses the feel and it becomes really sterile then and I'll, I'll miss it. So I don't know. I traded my friend Pat for, well, I didn't trade him. I traded him money for a drum machine recently <laughs> that I've been messing around with. It's like a newer old uh, Yamaha um drum machine that i can tell has similar fluctuations but i'm i'm really into it right now those things are great i mean you can hear uh, there's a couple of uh, jj kale songs that pop into mind because he would write a lot and just end up just fucking using drum machine on the record just use just the, those old school you know ones that were in the organs and the different thing like that and they just got a charm to them it's uh, really cool stuff okay so here's a question i actually was thinking i wanted to ask you how often do you record to a click never uh i will if I'm a cert, a few times on a few records, I have had a drummer that, that was good at playing to a click, as in rushing and dragging against a click. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'd let him listen to the click when we cut. But I, I can't hear it. I can't do it. Um, Adam's the same way. He can. I'm always fascinated because he never loses feel with it, where he can speed up and he can slow down. Um, so good. But yeah, but, but like, if... I'm by myself just going to a click. I'm like, God, this is fucking boring. It just sounds it sucks. Terrible. It sucks. It sucks so much. I mean, because you have a, you have a click. We have blood. We have a heartbeat. We have a click. I have an internal thing, you know. And like, I like to push and pull when I'm when I'm working with Ben. And if you do three piece with the, uh, uh, three or four piece here and there, uh, I like that kind of stripped down band because I just tell the drummer and the bass player, I'm like, you guys block. I'm like, don't follow me. Except for dynamically. When I go up, come up with me, go down with me. I'm like, with the tempo, I'm like, I'm going to push on the front of you and I'm going to drag way on the back. I'm like, you can come with me a little bit. I'm like, but it's best if you guys lock and let me be an asshole over the top, you know, and do that thing, you know. It's cool. I, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's fun when you can get a band that does all of that. Speaking of Adam, uh, first when we were, I did that first uh, tour where I was riding on the bus with y'all. And, and it's when I met. Uh, Mr. Willard, and he was sitting there, and I was so intimidated, you know, fucking rocking from the crib. He just says, he's a rock god. And, I, and then he looked over at me, and uh, without ever saying anything, uh, asked me, uh, I forget which one, but like a dad joke. And he started just telling me dad jokes, and I was like, oh, this guy's a nerd like me. And like that. And I just instantly, I was like, I got a lot of these jokes, you know? Uh, he had us the first time we rehearsed with him. He like, you know, we played a couple songs, it's going really well, and <clears throat> we're taking a break. And he starts telling this story that like is so like heartfelt about like his local teacher in his like you know, community who 
um, you know, like has whatever issue like, and he's like building up to it, building up to it. And I don't, I'm not even going to bother telling it, but then like, then it was a joke. It was like a full like 10, 15 minute build up, and we're all, all like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was at that moment I was like, oh, I like you a lot. This yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get along just fine. Um, well, uh, that filled up forty five minutes right there. I tried to make it too long because it's hard as shit to get them up on line after that. Uh, I do want to shout out real quick to uh, Bill Krejci, my buddy who puts these things on YouTube. So this will be on YouTube. After a day, I get it loaded up. But, you know, when the files get too big, the computer's like, what? What are you doing to me? You know? <laughs> um, so we've now reached the promotion part of the show. What do you got coming up on the box? You got... <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm going to be in that box in the corner. Yeah. I just want to go outside again and see my friends. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I want to play a show. I want to, like, you know, be around people. I'm going to see it, though. I don't know. I, you know, I just want to get through this. Surviving. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I appreciate you doing this. Hopefully this was um, a distraction for for us <laughs> for 45 minutes and for some other folks. Um, <laughs> let's see. I've got uh, – uh, what, what's coming up? Uh, I don't have any last shows, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I'm not, I played one last week on here, and I really enjoyed it. I miss playing music because I've been doing this uh, and I've been making these quarantine records where I'm just releasing demos and cutting stuff here at the house just to keep the fridge full available at the website and the link. Uh, total promotion hour. Um, but yeah, uh, the playing, the, the, the connecting to people. Man, I miss it, I miss it, I miss it. 